Hello students, we're going to talk about solving equations and inequalities, but the big difference today is the absolute value will be in these equations and inequalities. So part A here is your equation because it has the equal sign, and part B and C are your inequalities with the less than and the greater than or the less than and equal to and greater than and equal to signs and they are different. Each of these three examples will be very different. So let's start by solving an absolute value equation. When you have an equation, you're going to branch this into two different equations, one being x equaling 3, exactly like the given absolute value equation without the absolute value, and the other will be x equaling the negative of the right side of the equation, or a negative 3. So when you have an absolute value equation, you should get two solutions out of it. Now, it was not uncommon to put two solutions in what they call set notation, in which normally they'll give you these braces in, in your software package, and then you'll just write the two values in here with a comma between them. Now, part B is an absolute value inequality because this is the less than sign, or the less than or equal to. When you have the less than symbol, what you'll do is you'll eliminate the absolute value by placing your x between the positive version and the negative version of the right side of that original inequality. So x is between 3 and negative 3. We would normally write these solutions in interval notation. And before I go to interval notation very quickly, I'm just going to make a very quick graph of these values all values between negative 3 and 3, including the numbers 3 and negative 3, which are now easy to write in interval notation. So in interval notation, this answer would be negative 3 to 3. Now the third example is the greater than sign. This is probably the most difficult of the three. This one's different than part A and B. The greater than sign with an absolute value is going to branch into two different options. One is going to be the, the inequality x greater than or equal to 3, and the other will be x reverse the inequality, making it less than or equal to, and make the number negative. So the right branch is reverse the inequality and make the number negative. And then you would write the word or between them. Now, this also needs to be written in interval notation. Before I convert this to interval notation, I'm going to show you what this solution, these solutions look like on a graph. On the left side, it says x greater than or equal to 3. So you go to the 3, and greater than is to the right, and equal to is including it with the square bracket. x less than or equal to negative 3. Go to your negative 3, and to the left of it, and the square bracket is the equal to negative 3. There is your graphical representation of all of your solutions. Now to convert it to interval notation, there will be two intervals. On the left side, this is from negative infinity to negative 3. And on the right side, it is from 3 to infinity. Now these are your two intervals, and we put a u between them, representing the union of the two intervals being the solution to that original greater than absolute value inequality. So these are your three versions of solving. So we'll spend a while, we'll scroll down and we'll spend a while doing the equations only. Then we'll spend a while doing the less than examples, and then we'll spend a little time on the greater than examples. So we're going to start like part A with the equations with absolute value. Okay, so with equations as of part A above, this is a branching process in order to eliminate the absolute value in which the left branch is the equation, just removing the absolute value, and the right side would be to make it equal to the negative version of the right side of the original equation. Now you've done the hard part, you just need to solve. So I'm going to subtract 9 from each side, so I get a negative 4x equaling a negative 2, then when I divide by negative 4, I get x equaling 1 half. There's one solution. The second equation I created, I need to begin also by subtracting 9 from each side, leaving a negative 4x equaling a negative 16, and then when I divide by negative 4, x will be 4. So I have two solutions, 
and normally they will put this in set notation where you will separate your solutions with a comma. Example A is complete. Example B, we are still an equation with the equal sign and absolute values. Even though this is an absolute value equal absolute value, there is no variation in the process of solving this as compared to part A. You will have two branches. One will be to write the equation without the absolute value, and the other will be to write the equation but put a negative on all of the terms on the right hand side of the original equation. Once you have this written, you just start solving. So if I solve the equation on the left, I think I would move the x to the left side of this equation, resulting in a 4x plus 12 equaling 2. I would then subtract 12 from each side of this equation and get 4x equaling negative 10, and then divide by 4, which resulted in a negative 5 halves in reduced form. There's one solution. In the second branch, this is going to be 5x plus 2 equal to a negative x plus 2 when you distribute the negative sign. Now I would move the x's to the left side of this equation, so I have 6x plus 2 equaling positive 2. Then when you subtract 2, you will come up now with 6x equaling 0. It's okay to equal 0, and it is okay to divide by 6, and your solution on this right side would be 0. So in this example, we again have two solutions, and they are a negative 5 halves and a 0. That is referred to as set notation, listing your two solutions. Those are my two examples, again, of absolute value equations. All right, so we're going to transition now into absolute value inequalities, specifically with the less than or the less than or equal to. So remember, in part B of the first examples we were doing, the less than sign with an absolute value inequality changes to a compound inequality. So in other words, part A, to get rid of the absolute value, to dissolve it, or however you want to refer to this, this would be 4x plus or 4x minus 6 less than 10 and greater than negative 10. That's how we eliminate the absolute value. Then I simply solve. I add 6 to all three pieces of this compound inequality, resulting in a negative 4x being between negative 4 and 16. And then you would divide everything by 4. So you get negative 1 less than x less than 4. Now, this is, this is an easier example to write in interval notation, but again, I will show this on a graph. These are all numbers between negative 1 and 4, not including the negative 1 or the 4. So in interval notation, your solutions in interval notation would be negative 1 to 4. That's an interval. Okay, part B, still an inequality, absolute value inequality with a less than or less than or equal to sign. Okay, before you can eliminate the absolute value, you have to get the absolute value alone. So in other words, the minus 2 must move first step. So I'm going to come in here and add 2 to each side of this equation. Now the absolute value is alone, and only when it's alone like this on one side of the inequality am I then ready to eliminate it by writing this as a compound inequality where 5x plus 2 is be between 5 and negative 5. Okay, the hard part is over. Now we go through the solving process of subtracting 2 on all three portions of this inequality, this compound inequality. And then I would divide everything by 5, so you get x between 3 fifths and the negative 7 fifths. Again, some of you can immediately write this in interval notation. Some of you may need to see it graphically before you convert that. 
So I'm going to show you both. So if I were to graph this, x is between the two numbers, and we will include the endpoints because of the less than or equal to sign. So your answer written in interval notation would be from negative 7 fifths to 3 fifths and square brackets to include those numbers in the solution set. So now we've done two examples to complete the process of how to solve absolute value inequalities in which you have a less than sign. Alright, so my last set of solving here of the three options is the absolute value inequality with the greater than sign, meaning greater than or greater than and equal to. Alright, so this was where this is the new version. This is how the process on these with the greater than sign is to go back to a branching process. The left side written pretty much the same. The right side is a little tricky. Here's where you have to do the two-step process. You have to change the direction of the inequality and make the number negative. Two steps. Change the direction of the inequality and make the number on the right negative. Okay, once it's written, you start solving. I'm going to add 6 to each side of this inequality. And then I'm going to divide by 4, resulting in x greater than 4. My other setup, my other less than inequality, will again add 6 to each side. So I get 4x less than a negative 4. And then when I divide by 4, I get x less than a negative 1. You have two inequalities, and the word between them is or. Now, the best way to convert this to interval notation is to view it graphically first. Now, this, this inequality says x greater than 4, so I go to the 4. Greater than, the arrow to the right, I move to the right. Because it's just greater than, I put a parenthesis. x less than negative 1, I go to the negative 1. My arrow is to the left, so I look to the left of negative 1, and I use parentheses. Now, when I write this in interval notation, it is two sets of interval notation. My left set is negative infinity to negative 1. My right set is 4 to infinity, and I put the u between them, which is really indicating the union of these two intervals. Those are all of your solutions to the original absolute value inequality with the greater than sign. One more example. Example B, we cannot start working on this inequality with absolute value until I move the 6 away and have the absolute value alone or isolated on the left side of this inequality. So my first step is to move the 6. So now I have absolute value of 5x minus 5 minus 8x greater than or equal to 8. Now that the absolute value is alone, I treat it just like part A. There are going to be two portions of this. One is the, identical to the way it is written, but just erase the absolute value. And the other is the two-step process. Reverse the inequality and make the number negative on the right-hand side. Now that I have the setup, the rest of it is pretty easy to solve. I'm just going to subtract 5 from each sign, resulting in a negative 8x greater than or equal to 3. And then, very careful, when I divide by a negative 8, anytime you divide by a negative, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality. This has nothing to do with the absolute value. This strictly has to do with the rules of working with inequalities. When you divide by a negative number, you must reverse the direction. So this is now x less than or equal to a negative 3 eighths. On the right side, I'm going to subtract 5 off of each side resulting in negative 8x less than or equal to a negative 13. I'm going to again have to divide by a negative number, and when I do, I must reverse the inequality. This will result in x greater than or equal to a positive 13 eighths. Let's look at the graph. In the graph, I should have two regions. 
going in opposite directions. I have a negative 3 eighths and I have a 13 eighths. X less than or equal to a negative 3 eighths, go to your negative 3 eighths and go left of it and include the value negative 3 eighths with a square bracket. X greater than or equal to 13 eighths is to the right of the 13 eighths, including the number 13 eighths. So just so when you have the original inequality is greater than an absolute value equation with a greater than symbol, your result should look like this where you have in your graph you have two parts going in opposite directions and when you write it as an, inequal, as an interval you will have two intervals as your solution. Whoops, that's supposed to be a square bracket. So remember when it's the greater than symbol when you graph the results, when you graph your solutions, you should have two regions going in opposite directions, which should result in two intervals in your interval notation. <clears throat> okay, so we've done all three parts. Absolute value equations, absolute value with the less than sign, and absolute value with the greater than sign. Now, there are special cases in which your results are not typical. So for instance, in these special cases, I might have no solutions or I might have infinitely many solutions. So let's look at these special cases. The first example here says the absolute value of 6x minus 9 greater than a negative 2. Now remember, anytime you take the absolute value of something, it's going to make it positive. So the left hand side of this inequality will always be a positive value. Now. The left hand side is positive and all positive values on the left side will always be greater than a negative 2. Any positive number is going to be greater than a negative 2. So any number is going to work or in other words all real numbers are solutions. So if all real numbers are solutions, all those numbers out there then the way you would write this in interval notation is negative infinity to infinity. Because every positive number is going to be greater than negative 2. Okay, example B. Now we have the absolute value again, and any time I take the absolute value of something, it's going to be a positive value. It's going to be a positive result when I take the absolute value. Is it possible for a positive number to be less than or equal to negative 5? No, never would a positive number be less than a negative 5. So this is a special case in which there are no solutions. Now, to, to present an answer of no solutions, the way they normally do this is they refer back to set notation with these, with these braces. And you would put this symbol in here, which you'll see in your software package, and that's how you represent no solutions. This is called empty set. Okay, so when there are no solutions, you usually go to set notation, and it's referred to as the empty set, representing no values are solutions to the given question. Now, part C will have an answer, but it's only going to have one. So normally when you have absolute value equations, you have two branches, one which would equal a positive zero and the other which would equal the negative zero. Well, zero cannot be positive or negative. So when you put a plus sign on us or a minus plus sign on us or a minus sign on it, it makes no difference to its value. So all you really need to do if you have an absolute value equal to zero is just lose absolute value and solve it as if it was just an equation. And so in this case you will get one solution which will be pretty typical when you have an absolute value equation equal to zero. So those are your three special cases, three unusual situations that you might run into when you're solving. Now we do have one more example here which is an application. It looks terrible but it's not. It says one cell phone service charges a flat rate of $35 a month plus one cent per
per text. Anytime you see price per text or price per item, the word per is going to tell you to multiply times x. So one cent per text is going to be 0.01 times x. And that means anytime the word per is, you're going to multiply. And that means that x is the number of text messages. Okay. So the cell phone service charges a flat rate of $35 a month plus one cent per text. So the cost of the cell phone service will be $35 plus .01 per text. A second company offers a flat monthly fee of $50 for with unlimited texting. So the cost of the second company is just a flat $50. That's it. Nothing added to it. Period. How many texts would you need to send for the first company to charge you more per month than the second company? Okay. This is my first company, the 35 plus 0.01x, and my second company is 50. So for my first company to be more than my second company, I would make this into an inequality using the greater than sign. When is company 1 greater than company 2? And then you would just solve this. So I would subtract 35 from each side, which would result in 0.01x greater than 15. And then you would divide by 0.01, which would result in x being greater than 1,500. Now what that means is the first company will be more than the second company if there are more than 1,500 text messages in the month. So that is the answer. When is company one more than company two? When you have 1,500 text messages. That is the end of this section. And feel free to repeatedly watch this. But once again, there are three main solving situations we're talking about. They all have absolute value in, which is why they're kind of difficult. Your first situation is an equation. Your second is with a less than sign. And your third is with a greater than sign. When you have the equal sign, you'll just have a couple of solutions, nothing fancy. The less than sign will be an interval notation. The greater than sign will be an interval notation again. But this interval notation will be two intervals with the union between them because your solution set is going to be two regions going in opposite directions. I hope that's helpful and that you can now feel comfortable solving these absolute value situations.